Eclipses offer unique opportunities to study the outer atmosphere of the sun. The sun is too bright to see it. It's just like you don't see stars during the daytime, but the stars are there. So during a total solar eclipse, when the moon blocks the surface of the sun, it dims everything to about the level of nighttime or dusk. So stars appear, uh, planets appear, and the corona appears. So the Earth fortunately has a magnetic shield. It's continuously hit by the solar wind. But sometimes the sun produces these huge explosions. And then the punch, if it's towards the Earth, then the, the Earth's magnetic bubble will feel this punch. It can have uh, dire consequences on telecommunication satellites, er Earth orbiting satellites, etc. So from a pragmatic point of view and uh, you know the impact on our human day-to-day -day life, understanding the solar wind is very important and understanding where it's coming from and whether we can predict when it's going to produce these huge bubbles. coronal mass ejections. It's one thing that we're hoping to find this year. The sun goes through a cycle of activity. It's about 11 to 12 years. So it's all driven also by magnetism. And when the activity increases, the likelihood of having these huge explosive events becomes higher. With the type of instrumentation we have between the imagers and the spectrometers, if we can catch a coronal mass ejection, observing the outer atmosphere of the sun during the total solar eclipse. It would be really lucky because we can analyze it, analyze its chemical composition, analyze the temperature distribution in this coronal mass ejection, and analyze how everything is changing between the three observing sites. So that would be a really a unique opportunity and a novel one.